What's up, you lovely people? We are back again. Zoe here, joined by Jaws and Necra. We're getting ready for our first match in the NA region. It's going to be the Group A winners match between Toronto Defined and Shikigami. So let's dive straight in and talk about those teams. Toronto Defined is one we're starting with. Of course, this is a franchise we've known and loved from the Overwatch League. It's so great to see them continue their support for competitive Overwatch uh, through this new chapter. And also... I mean, they're rocking up with star power. We have some former champions on the server here. Yeah, oh, we yeah. sure do. Oh my goodness. Like, where do we even start with this one, Jaws? Because I feel like when you look at this roster, what should immediately jump out at you is someone, Merritt, and RuPaul coming in from the Florida Mayhem roster that most recently won the Overwatch World Championships. And now they're back trying to compete in this brand new Overwatch ecosystem. And they rounded out with some really, really top tier talent. Oh yeah, I think this roster is just unbelievably stacked. Like it, I think this analogy is used way too much in like esports, and you can say sports as well, like David versus Goliath. But literal champions versus players that a lot of them do play in collegiate and have had some fairly decent success there. But how do you how do you look up at them and go, ah yes, this is going to be this is going to be a fair one. This is a fair fight for sure. Like it's it's tough, man. Shikigami have got their work cut out for them. We've had a lot of three Overwatch, and they did tweet out like maybe this, you know, I pondered the orb there's no more three o's but this one may be a little bit one-sided here in terms of uh, toronto defined being giga stacked yeah this is gonna be an uphill battle for shikigami uh, also i noticed that in the toronto defined um squad that danny was listed as a player not as a coach so maybe that's the hope for shikigami maybe if danny gets up then you know that could be your your winning condition but let's uh, talk map vetoes here and then take us yeah. into the game guys yeah, I'm honestly not too surprised here. Like, in terms of map vetoes and stuff, Rose, you were definitely talking about um, how you could favor certain maps if you're favoring certain comps. A lot of the comps are like, you want to go fast, you're going to play Lucio. So most of the maps in the map pool, they're pretty open for that. I'm happy we're seeing Esperanza, by the way, not Colosseo. Thank goodness. Um, but Hollywood's a bit of a shock, I'd say. That's the one that stands out to me. Most players, especially in EU, play King's Row because that, I feel like, is the EU map. So a little bit of a change up there is nice. A lot more dive potential too on uh, on, uh, on Hollywood. But I really think that this map pool overall favors the Toronto Defiant because they have such an incredible amount of flexibility when it comes down to the tank choices that someone can play. Someone has the best Winston that we have seen in Overwatch in a very long time. And to be able to bring that to any map, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's going to be even on Li Zhang, we might even get a chance to see that. But also just any sort of dive hero feels really nice to be able to run on Toronto Defiant. Yeah, I mean, the roster is stacked and the ability to flex, which is something we were talking about before we went to that break, um, it is super important. You just gotta, you gotta be able to flex to almost everything right now. We're gonna roll out. Seeing Doomfist from Toronto and a little bit of Queen. The Junk Queen into the Doomfist. It's pretty nice. I can. I, I mentioned before that Korea was playing a lot of the Doom and they switched to Zarya. Um, but the big playmaker here for Shikigami is going to have to be Vintage on the Cass. Cass is just an unbelievably strong pick right now. If you hit that Magnate on somebody, no movement abilities can be used. You have to burst them down. And both Sugar Free, Merit, and someone are very susceptible. In fact, the whole roster is susceptible to that Hinder Grenade. Yeah, and Cassidy just has some really fantastic just general damage as well. So you know as long as you can get that consistent damage down, that's also going to hinder the amount of healing that can come through from the team as well. There's a hinder grenade. Sugar free. Oh, first blood go. goes down to vintage. I mean, look, you can throw that nade from a mile away. That is going to home onto you like a magnet getting together with another magnet. There's an analogy there somewhere, Rose. I don't know where it is. Toronto to find it. I'm still capping. Uh, but Shikigami... They're not going to have too much longer before uh, Sugar Free comes back, but it doesn't matter because Vintage picks up another kill. Someone dead. They do trade for Graveyard here, so there's still a chance for Toronto to come back in, but there is the flip. Nice little reflect kill from Sugar Free as Mary's got a pulse bomb, and not too long after that reflect kill, that'll be Toronto getting the reflip again. Yeah, I mean, Sugar Free's Genji. I want to highlight this because Sugar Free is one of those players that came through as one of the best rookie talents we'd ever seen in the Overwatch League. And now getting a chance to see him on one of his best heroes in that Genji, it's still going to be a very powerful pick to partner up with Merit's Tracer and someone's Doomfist. That's a lot of explosive potential. 
Yeah, super big explosive potential from Merit too with that pulse bomb. Keep an eye on Iridian server right now. It does go pretty low. Has hit the recall. However, there come the rushes. Noctis is actually the first one to fall here. It's Merit just continuing to dominate this server room. And now the main focus fire should be onto Vintage. There's the stick. No roll available. No damage mitigation. No Suzu. No nothing for Shikigami. Toronto is going to just take that one over. And with 60% on the board, you're looking almost for last fight here for Shikigami to come back in. It's so tough because Shikigami can really only look oh, at something someone. like the sound barrier in order to get in, and someone is just going to be uh, the ace in the hole, I suppose, if you will, <laughs> waiting on the outside. Uh, it's got me to strike too. If he wants to get out of there, if he do, if he does get super low, sexy man, sixty nine. Please watch out behind you, please. Shikigami, check your corner. Just a little no. walk in. Hello, someone. Oh, short punch there onto Vintage. Does receive the shout from the Queen. Someone's going to punch straight back in. Decides better of it. Just charges that one up. But it's just being a menace. It's just being a pain on this corner. It does leave Shikigami in an odd spot. They leave their back line unattended. You're going to get insta-deleted in exactly what just happened there. Two sound barriers coming out, but with Vintage already dead and that blade pulled super late from Sugar Free. It looks like a clean sweep for Toronto. Two kills for Sugar Free. Over time done toronto take round one vintage didn't even have a chance to use the dead eye there either you heard yeah, the sound go off that he was ready to let it rip and then there was someone ready to punch you in the face yeah. <laughs> look it's the worst all in the game like it's it's very bad it's good for zoning it, it's good if you have speed boost and whatnot but yeah the amount of times you're going to get interrupted like you said rose from someone or just sugar free can dash through, through you it. like, like yeah there's so many it's, answers it was like you just use it for zoning and then or just for the cheeky reload right you get the double reload if you hit the roll too so yeah it's uh it's pretty rough using that ultimate at the best of times but it's like shikigami okay changing up to we're just evolving through in the korean meta right now as uh, sex man six nine we'll pick up the uh zarya i love zarya in this meta zarya got some really nice changes to the projectile size of that beam and so you're going to be hitting targets way easier and charging up to that graviton surge faster and that could be really impactful here too to help save a teammate with a bubble yeah, it's super good against the Doomfist. Um, the, the way and the pacing of Zarya is really nice because the Doomfist can't just be in your face the entire time. So Zarya is able to keep up the pace in terms of bubbles. The Doomfist comes in, you're going to have a bubble ready. Doomfist has to get out. The rest of the team has to get out too. Uh, you've got another bubble by the time they actually make their re-engagement. So it's going to work out really well uh, for Shikigami if they can find an entrance into the fight. Toronto, they end up taking the point super quickly. They end up putting pressure on the front line and Rupal already goes down. Vinci's just going to follow them to the grave and Shikigami are going to be able to find the flip again Toronto not able to hold on for too long 100 energy on uh, the Zarya 2 is going to be a pretty mean weapon in the face of Toronto so it looks like they're just going to go for a quick reset here and group up together as five yeah, but to, oh, look at that. Oh, Shikigami what? wants to try to chase down some of these picks, but with that pulse bomb coming through, Parrot's at least going to try to keep the pressure on to Shikigami as they've got to back right back up to the point. He's turning into a vintage wide. The amount of time he's been uh, six <laughs> oh, no. feet under in a casket. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough of vintage right now, but it's the perfect target acquisition. The Cassidy's just so much currently in this current meta, just so much damage output, and uh, the ability to use that hinge to grenade to stop one of the more mobile heroes on the side of Toronto to find is just so key and Toronto know that's the problem and just insta uh, executing on the vintage as soon as they come out of spawn. Nice little Suzu there stops that pulse bomb from doing much damage from Dan Twist and uh, Shikigami do end up capping the point again. Can't go down if you're the tracer right now and uh, rather brave is Dan there and not even using the recall and with a graviton surge coming up soon as that Zarya lets that rip this should be at least a couple of kills. There it is three people on top but the beast's gonna get landed too and Sugar Free's got the blade to back them up if they need it. High noon going to get launched in and uh, surprise surprise vintage ends up going down and toronto to fight just kind of running rings around shikigami sugar free not even required to use the blade in this fight and that should just be the fight one for toronto it was so smart for toronto to be able to have both the kitsune rush as well as the sound barrier to lay right on top of that graviton surge and ideally what you're looking for with those ultimates is just to play defensively but you've got the sound barrier for the extra health and then you also have the kitsune rush to deal some extra damage so that shikigami can't get close enough with these more melee oriented heroes but when you get a chance to play defensively now toronto's got a lot of other tools up their sleeve to work with for this next fight okay your tracer needs help shikigami 
nice little flank now. He's got a pulse bomb. Oh, vintage. It's just... He, he, he's in so much trouble. Someone please help my bat. That twist does take down Ripple, but I mean, the fight is done. It's dusted. It's over. Vintage again, the target for Toronto. And you're happy with that? I mean, because the comp executes so quickly, uh, Toronto's comp, and you can just dive on one target and just burst them out. You don't really mind Ripple going down like that, the sacrificial lamb, as it were. Um, as Shikigami, once again, lose another fight. Didn't build up too much ults uh, in that last fight either. However, a bit thankful that the Pulse Bomb and the uh, Sugar Free Blade is not available to Toronto for this next one. Yeah, you've got everything off the table now if you're Shikigami, so you can go in, try to get a pick here with Ooh. this Pulse Bomb, but Dantris is already forced out with the recall. There's the rush. Dantris getting insta-bursted by RuPaul. A little kunai to the face, and then a bit of extra damage coming from Lucio, and uh, RuPaul taking names and numbers. Didn't like that he went down first in that last fight, clearly. All right, Merit suffers from the same fate here, but RuPaul with a triple. Okay, RuPaul with a quad. Yeah, he's a champ for a reason. You must have amnesia. You forgot he's hit. <laughs> He, he is him, and this is going to be the mechanical skill that we've all come to love and expect out of a player like RuPaul. And it's going to really lead to a, a nice round win here, I think, because Shiki Gami, they still have yet to get back into this one. Dantris can't even use this Pulse Bomb. Yeah, it's been pretty rough with Dan already. Had to hit the recall there, so has to get back to the rest of his team. There you go. Five-man sound barrier coming in, but Vegas going to have a better be here if he uses it. And he doesn't need to use it that quickly either, because they will already win the fight. Overtime is here, 99% to 78. Mind you, quite a little bit closer than I initially anticipated as Shikigami end up going down and uh, I return to my chair just like that. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with their pajama? Hey, no one can see the bola. I was just... I don't know why I was <laughs> so he's diving in in the background. So, Look, so in with the hey, I need to stand up. I love it. I love it. it listen, you're, it's all its all comfort. It's all comfort right now. Comfort for us, comfort for Toronto Defiant. They're feeling good. They're feeling revived, refreshed. That was a very good first map win for them. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit closer than I anticipated, honestly. Uh, Shikigami putting up a decent fight, but Toronto Defiant, nowhere to strike. And that person is vintage. You take down the Cassidy, that's a lot of damage now gone from the comp. And even switching to the Zarya, which is pretty decent against the Doom, in all honesty. Um, but uh, when we're, in terms of like tempo timing, in terms of like when Toronto want to go in and out and get in and out, but there just weren't enough bubbles in the world to help vintage like survive. Even the spawn dives too. Like it's Toronto know exactly where to punish Shikigami. And yeah, it's definitely in the DPS lineup. I mean, Hollywood next map, a decent map for, for dive and Toronto to find Rose. I'm going to be honest, they're probably going to run the same thing. Um, we're going to jump to Hollywood in just a second. Yeah, I would love to see if maybe the Zarya can come back out again. I think one of the difficulties of running Zarya in a map like that is that you have so many different angles in which Toronto Defiant can also approach you from. But in theory, it also feels like a really good choice to have into something like the Genji that we saw from Sugar Free. Yeah. You can't deflect the Zarya beam no matter how much you try. <laughs> It'll still laser you down if it's supercharged up. But He's yeah, so we've quick. all been there. You just can't track a guy that is just that quick with the Lucio speed. It's just impossible. Look, I know the projectile size has got increased but Sugar Free's movement's a bit, a bit too sublime, I think, for Shikigami right now. It's rough. I mean, I, I think Twitch chat agrees too. Toronto Defiant, a 96% vote versus Shikigami's 4%. Honestly, a 1 to 23 on that one. You know what? That's a value bet right there on Shikigami. I respect it, but uh, I think Toronto Defiant, maybe it's a 3-0. Maybe Hollywood, they can kind of turn it around, but you're going up against champions here. It's, it's a real rough one. But hey, diamonds are forged under pressure, right? So maybe Shikigami can take a ton of lessons from this match to be able to bring into the subsequent stages that we have. But also, the job's not done yet. Even though that first map looked very, very good for Toronto Defiant, there are still some bright spots here from Shikigami that could bode well for them on something like Hollywood. I think the Zarya could work even better here if you want to try to force those fights to be in a little bit more close quarters. You have way less openings on some of the rooms that you have that you could play that type Tiny Overwatch in. A little Tiny Overwatch. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. We love Tiny Overwatch. Here's another kind of 
thing that I would think we'd see, especially on slower maps uh, like Circuit. Classic, obviously, Sigma on Circuit, but Hollywood's a very, very good map for, for Sigma as well. First point, not the best. Second point, definitely the better of the, of the two there, just because of how far you can stand back and taking control of the high ground, super important. But I'm uh, not surprised to see Toronto run this either. I mean, just stick RuPaul and Vega up onto the high ground in Cafe. Good mm -hmm. luck getting on the back line. Shikigami are going to want to do exactly that, though, Rose, with this Diva pick. You gotta hit, you gotta hit every single matrix on those sticky bombs from Sugar Free, though. Although, uh, or your mech is gonna be annihilated. We did see Toronto Defiant actually play this composition yesterday in their match versus Final Gambit, which was a full hold on Hollywood, by the way. So, whether or not history repeats itself remains to be seen. But I also, in theory, like the Diva choice to be able to help dive on some of those squishier targets, like Vega's Zenyatta. But also, Vega is another support you have to look at in terms of his mechanical skill. Sitting next to a support player like Rupal, both of these players have so much pick potential when it comes down to either of the supports they're picking. I mean, that's a real rough start for, for Shikigami. I mean... You want to get Vintage up to a point where either they can stand on the high ground or they have like a decent angle on the back line of Toronto to fire. But Toronto aren't going to give them to the, uh, going to give them that. I mean, you can see Vintage now trying to wrap around onto height, but you're going to still have to deal with Sugar Free and Merit. And even the orbs coming through from Vega. There's a really nice like line of sight there. You can see uh, as Vintage is trying to shoot back at Vega right now. And you almost permanently have to have the Diva standing on top of you in order for you not to get bursted out. And then someone could just rotate to high ground. It's going to be a tough point to cap, but Vega it does end up taking a headshot there, and with Vintage making a little home for themselves on the high ground, you're going to be uh, feeling a bit better about yourself. But, I mean, Vega taking down the Tracer, yeah, that's not the start you really want. Two minutes to go, Rose, and this fight is going one way. It is. I mean, Shikigami cannot break through this bunker that Toronto <laughs> Defiant have put on the I back see those of Lucio this point. Oh, well, rest <laughs> of right. hey, It was a good try. Um, you know. It's a good effort. Yeah, the Bob, the Bob figured it out. All good. One tick, though, for Shikigami on first. Should be a fairly easy recontest here, especially with Transcendence. You've got mm -hmm. the window to and Vintage. Of course, like Vintage needs to be on high ground, but the smarter play maybe playing on low right now, especially with that window up on height. Even Merritt with the Pulse Bomb could uh, land Shikigami in a bit of an awkward situation. Looks like uh, Dan's trying to get a, an avenue onto the back line, but with the mech dead and Sexy Man 69 also going down, ain't no way you come back from this. The Space Creator tool in the D.Va uh, gone. That means your Trace is going to have the worst time imaginable, and there you go. There is the cleanup. One minute and 30 seconds left, but two ticks on the board. Still winnable for Shikigami here. It is still winnable. You could use the sound barrier super aggressively for Shikigami to be able to engage under the point. And Shikigami have needed a lot of help in order to push the defenses of Toronto Defiant back. So maybe it's going to be the overhealth that they need as just the extra buffer to make their way through. But Sexy Man's got to be careful. They're taking a ton of damage with the Orb of Discord and the Focus Fire from this Toronto front line. Yeah, I mean... LOS in the Discord a little bit easier now. Of course, it has a little cooldown, but you can reapply it to the same person, but there's so many ults for Toronto here. I mean, it's ridiculous. You're going to have to use the sound barrier for the flux if it's a, a, a dangerous one, like if it catches two or three people. Probably one if I had to go for it, but it is someone. He's kind of the goat like that. Self-destruct on, on top of Cafe. They do end up destroying the lab, but there's the Transcendence. Now going to see them through the rest of the fight, you'd imagine. Sugar Free going low, hits the dupe. Vega straight out of the Transcendence, joins his best friend RuPaul up onto the high ground, and Merit does what Merit does best, and kill your entire team. 25 seconds and a giant stagger now. Uh, yeah, you might as well set up a car, get a, a little Uno game right now. There's no way you're getting out of here alive and that really is all she wrote it should be look at how toronto fire are going to push up to the spawn as well they might just pop down the amplification matrix to put that final nail in the coffin but that's going to be another full hold here for toronto defiant on hollywood this is two in a row now for them back to back from yesterday i like the chad we to make a pick at the very end from vintage i gotta say it just to get picks out of spawn just uh, pad the stats a little bit pad the kd didn't get any shots off, Sam. I respect yeah. the confidence. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And that's the big thing as well, right, Rose? Like, you have to have confidence going into a match like this. Open bracket, it's pretty easy when it comes to the first couple of games. But as you get on and on and on, and now you're reaching the stage where you're facing champions, uh, yeah, confidence is the best thing you can have. But it's just pound for pound. Toronto Defiant really have Shikigami beat currently. But still, 88% on point one. 
Anything is winnable. Anything is winnable. Shikigami could just go with the fuller hold, to be <laughs> quite honest. It's going to be a tough ask, but it's going to be giving a little bit of taste of their own medicine, I think, as we see Shikigami leaving spawn. Sigma, right. Bap, Zen. Someone? Someone? No, I'm not. I'm no. Mm -mm. I'm not going to think about it yet. We're not. I think Jaws. we do it. I we're not we're not gluing knowledge it. until they come out of school. It's sugar freeze on me and there it's on sim. <laughs> well, they might just be TP now, but still I think oh, I don't know. Style point. Don't do I think it Ryan to right him. now is probably the worst tank in the game currently. It's pretty although rough. one of the most fun. <laughs> I think Ryan is definitely in a in a worse state, especially as RAM exists. Nah, poor man just gets CC'd. Like He's doing CC'd. It. Oh, they're doing it. Okay. That that's my MVP. T pose on him. <laughs> Look. TP straight to cafe or yep. TP across. Okay, go a little wrap around. Wait for the like cooldown to come him. back. Yep. Or you can just walk at him. Yep. Clear off high ground. Just take away every single inch from Shikigami and uh, destroy graveyard in the process. Uh, uh oh. Big trouble. Sugar Free is dead, but a parting shot onto Vintage. Oh. Make sure he meets a frosty end as uh, Dan also falls. And the Ryan, yes. If you're someone, you can play absolutely anything. Touch the spawn challenge, maybe a little bit successful. We'll see if uh, Shikigami or Vintage can try and. <laughs> no, Vintage. No. Vintage is also had enough. No. Kind of game among us there, trying to be sneaky. Ain't happening. And there it is. <laughs> it's trying to define, having a little bit of fun towards the end there. Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, quick and clean 2-0. Uh, we still got one more map to go, of course, it being a, it being a first of three. But who, who'd have thought, huh? Who'd Touch have, the spawn right, doors. The yeah, successful. I. It is group stages. Anything is possible. The fuller hold could have happened, but also someone decided to just go kill the team. <laughs> he went the Ryan. He's got the stats. 100% win rate and Ryan never need to touch it again. So we're all good. We're chilling now. Now we can just play normally and uh, yeah, you can you can live happy knowing that you've got 100% win rate. Yeah, it, it's pretty tough. Um, obviously, Shikigami, um, pound for pound, like I mentioned, uh, doesn't really match up to Toronto Defiant, but it's also kind of valuable experience as well, um, going up against some of the best, um, even though you are kind of getting beaten into the dirt outside of a car park at Wendy's, you know, like it's, it's tough. It is a tough one. And Toronto, it might be uh, an everyday stroll in the park right now, but there are some incredibly tough competitors in the NA region. M80 is looking exceptionally scary. There's a lot of competition that's going to happen later down the line. And uh, yeah, they will definitely meet their match later on. But Shikigami right now, still hold your head tight, making it this far too. They're not out of the woods just yet. Yeah, they still have a couple of other stages that they can play. They also have another match in the group, so they're not totally yeah. down for the count. And we'll see what else they have in store for us as we look forward to the next map that we're going to have. But it's going to be on the yep. other side of this break. So don't go anywhere, guys. You're still watching the Overwatch Champion Series.
Alright, welcome back. Toronto Defiant and Shikigami. Facing up against each other. It's been a yeah, it's been a bit of a quick one, at least for the time being, Rose. But it could change here. A couple of substitutions coming in. But abstract coming in on DPS and a solo in on the tank. So it's exciting to see that Abstract, Dan Twist, and as well as Noctis are actually all going to be on the same team together right now because they are all playing for the same university, University of St. Thomas. So when we said that this team has a bunch of experience in the collegiate level, these two players have been playing together for quite a while now. So maybe that's the synergy that they need in order to try to take down a team that has been full of that since the very beginning of formation. Yeah, maybe you just need that extra oomph, that extra bit of spice on top. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, Toronto aren't making any roster substitutions. Like, who's really surprised uh, about that? Absolutely nobody. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Man number three could go their way, but just stacking up, it's going to look pretty rough. And especially in this kind of meta two rows where it is so quick. Lucio is a must pick. And mm -hmm. I like what you mentioned before in the pre-show too. Like, it's, it's very easy to get good damage on Lucio right now. And a lot of Lucios, I was speaking to Astro about it. He's saying like, and just looking by his stats too, and a lot of Lucio's stats right now, they're doing so much damage because the projectiles are very easy to hit now with the increased projectile hitbox. Um, so Lucio's a farming beat quicker and they're just dissing out that extra portion of damage that makes the game a little bit quicker and if you're a team that isn't as experienced or isn't as, as championship level winning right uh, as Toronto Define is that kind of speed that kind of tempo can just really just topple you and uh, that's currently what we're seeing here but Esperanza Chikigami maybe they uh, end up switching up the tempo here Toronto looking like they want to play a dive Vega with the Liari uh, Surely not. At this, Honestly, I am I very down for this. Yeah, like I can't really. It's not good. It's not a good. Say pick. anything about it because Toronto Defiant yeah, has been bad. absolutely crushing. <laughs> so like, yeah. go play whatever you want at this point. Great. Show us why the Alari can still be a viable hero in some capacity. That would be great. Damn, that pilot went crazy. He <laughs> got insta killed. I saw Vega like also lining up. Like, where am I going to put this, huh? Well, Sugar Free's also dead, so uh, not the worst start at all. Though down to it's a little bit of an overextension there on the uh, on the tracer. Toronto don't have to, as much damage, of course, as uh, Shikigami with the Sombra, and even less damage as Sombra's dead. Uh, but taking control of height is going to be the name of the game for Shikigami. They have to just rush on the support. You have to kill Vega and RuPaul, but it's going to be so difficult for them to actually execute on that. Because um, as soon as the Queen ends up jumping in, a manual hack's going to come through, extra damage, and you're going to get absolutely affirmed by uh, the DPS. Yeah, I mean, someone's just, just creating so much space as well, and he also has the ability to just go back and heal for the supports. So how do you actually find that opening if you're Shikigami to find those picks? Solo gets there. So Vega is now down for the count, but you, it's going to be so scrappy for all Ooh. of these fights. Good sleep. Okay, okay. Okay, now, okay, Toronto, there we go. It's We're not switching. Trolling now. We're switching. RuPaul, they can stay for Nano. I mean, you might as well. Um, I'd expect them to switch over to like a Bap or a Kiri or something. I but, think uh, Ana's so hard to run there. right now, too. Just jump in there, hit a nade for Suzu, send someone in with Nano, and uh, then win switch. the fight, right? I think that's the general thought process of running the honor right now. The Nano can still be very powerful, but I'm just thinking that it's just a very difficult hero to keep up and running if you have something like Dan Twist on the other side playing the Tracer. Well, Nano Primal Rage. And uh, yeah, I'll trust someone with that one any day of the week. A nice little double. Duplication into the Winston too. Well, how's your tank mechanics? I don't think you're going to get a chance to even show them off abstract picked off in that copy and they're gonna have to back up real fast and uh, shit got me they used two ults in that fight i mean toronto did invest a lot more there but now this big win oh, winning fight in this emp that's coming up next on the menu and she got me gonna need to perfectly time this sound barrier otherwise it is history and lights out for them yeah i mean noctis is gonna have to stay out of the way there's a really big opening pick here by dan twist with that pulse bomb onto rupaul so huge source of healing is now eliminated from toronto but does rupaul stick on this choice 
to be able to get back into things as we see Sugar Free getting ready with his EMP. Yeah, the ping of the Lucio, oh, the ping of the Lucio, there it is, there the EMP. Nox just does manage to get away, but no, not quite. That EMP, the hack ran out just in time, but they were so low, they definitely would have Ajaxed after that. And Vega comes in with a cleanup kill, beautifully timed. Solo does end up using that Rampage, and it does force Toronto away. They lost two in that dive. And Shikigami saved the sound barrier. So it was just really a neutral fight with an EMP used from Toronto that didn't really net them a whole bunch of space. They didn't get a clean team wipe, so they still don't have control of that bot. No, but that gave Sugar Free an opportunity to switch over to the Echo of his own. And this is another hero that Sugar Free is very, very good at. And you don't have a specific hit scan on Shikigami that can necessarily naturally hit the Echo. So can Sugar Free utilize that as an advantage? Kitsune rush first, though. There's the rush. Vega's got the sound barrier in a couple of percent. If they feel like Shikigami are overextending, they can just jump straight back in. Doesn't look like they want to really mess with them in a small corridor, although that's normally where Queen wants to be, but you are still pretty scared of RuPaul, Sleep, Nade, etc. Even if you bait out the Suzu early, like the Queen's pretty much dead. Speaking of which, there's the Suzu after the anti and sound barrier comes out. A late one from Vega almost got C9'd. A nice boop there from Noctis, but it doesn't end up working out for them. The latest sound barrier there from Vega They've got ults to back them up, but they don't need them. Someone cleans up the back line, and the bot is in control for Toronto. Oh my god, I thought Vega was going to get that killed was almost there. Almost an Ajax. <laughs> almost an Ajax. Well, like, that's the power, though, of the Lucio boop right now. We get booped, and then you get stunned for four and a half seconds. That's actually, like, or 0.45, sorry, but that's a, like, huge difference now. And Vega did almost get bodied, but now Toronto finally get to get some progress down onto this bot. And they have a lot of different things to work with now, too. The Nano back online, someone could go for Nano Primal again. Uh, a lot that they can work with. As soon as you see that Queen step up, as soon as you see that Suzu coming out, yeah, you just rip that Nano. But it looks like someone's going to start this off getting a little bit angry as Noctis gets booted straight back into Merit's line of fire. And uh, checkpoint, as Toronto's now. Only one ult expended, and Shikigami still a lot of room to work with in terms of a spawn positioning. At least they're going to group together as five quicker, but, I mean, Toronto's pressure, not even just their ultimates, just their neutral play is just so, so good. And uh, po pushing it past the checkpoint, always quite nice. Nice abstract going for something rather scary in the back lines. A nice nail onto the high ground. RuPaul in a little bit of trouble. Sends out the nano boost onto Sugar Free to try and trade. RuPaul does end up going down. They trade support for support. And with Sugar Free still holding onto this duplication, uh, we might not even need a support in this fight. Vegas is enough falling down, so no heals coming in for Toronto right now. So they do end up deciding to back off. And they can give it up here too, because Shikigami still needs to try to find the checkpoint. And with the bot still being in Toronto Defiance territory, their respawns are very quick here. Nice post bomb onto Abstract. I mean, this is the problem with Esperanza too. You can just get hard stunned, like hard locked at this choke point, especially as Toronto has checkpoint two. I mean, if they take that bot and take it away from Shikigami, it's going to take them two or three fights to actually get to a checkpoint of their own. Duplication onto the tracer for Sugar Free. How many pulse bombs are we looking at? Here's one being thrown out. Nice little blink, uh, dash forward, doesn't manage to get the connection, and only one free pulse bomb for the Echo. But it might not matter. I think the damage has really already been done, and the bot is back to where that. Uh, Little brick wall, not brick wall, robotic wall. I'm not sure what <laughs> the tier they're uh, using on that. But um, they're bricks. pushing it so far forward. Shikigami just are constantly on the back pedal. Shikigami have a really difficult terrain to work with here with the Junker Queen comp as well. There isn't too much natural just ter terrain for them to hide behind. Uh, and Sugar Free is using all of that to his advantage. Rampage hits two. Vega use the sound barrier though. Sound barrier on five. Shikigami are also going to unleash their own, but now it's about the focusing of targets. But someone's going to make that an absolute nightmare for them as that primal rage just batting solo away, unable to really engage in the team fight whatsoever. And Toronto defiant, just standing tall, taking the bot. I'm not sure. But Rose, this might be a full cap. 85 meters and counting now with a two and a half to go. Uh, well, Toronto Defiant did they yesterday versus Phylon Gambit. It was a full cap on Coliseo. So add Esperanza to the list and that might actually be what happens here. Merit is looking for a quick little pick there with the Pulse Bomb. Gets found out. But look how close they are to that final destination. Good movement. Good Almost move. a pick here, Susu. 
Yeah, Solo in trouble. Sugar Free did have Gracie lodged in him, but uh, survived at least for the time being. Bot still moving, and Merritt is still killing. Yep, Toronto are going to make their way towards the final checkpoint. They said, we troll now with Alari, but nope, when they play the not meta comp, I guess, the Arna's not really that meta right now, but still, a comp they're very comfortable with. It, they make the game look easy. Nice little nade onto Solo. No Suzu coming out, but they are going to rip the rush instead, and instantly, as soon as Toronto Defiant hear the voice line, they back up. As they should, because at that point, you would just be falling to the wayside and giving over a lot of free progress to Shikigami, yeah. but not before Vegas able to find another pick onto Dantwist, and that's the go button here for Toronto to try to finish the job. Yeah, oh, okay. Nice. Okay, abstract. Let's go out. Okay. It's a little copy into the arm and misses the sleeve. Oh, Vegas got the fancy feet. One more combo, can't get him. It's the nade though, but I think this might be at least a bit of space for abstract and the rest of the team. They do end up taking the bot, stealing that one back, but yeah, couldn't quite land the kill on RuPaul, which really would have been the nail in the coffin for this next push. Uh, but it's got to be a flawless push here. Shikigami <laughs> want to win this out. It's a big pick there onto Merit, but this is only a minute left here for Shikigami to try to get this behemoth of a task done. Yep, one minute. That's uh, perfectly put, Rose. Sandbarra comes out from Noctis as someone gets nanoed into the back line. Noctis has not getting slept, and now Solo just trying to help his supports. Noctis dead. A long-range sleep from RuPaul was a quick end to the Lucio's life, and Solo once again cannot play the game. <laughs> he solo rampages someone. Can he find the kill? Yes, in the end, the bleed damage does it, but it is all merit in that kill feed. It is all blue. Toronto to fight, pushing that bot towards the checkpoint again. They got forward spawn still, of course, and with 20 seconds to go, someone, he do be trolling. A little Malga pick at the very end here. 100% Malga win rate? And, yeah, maybe, yeah, just picking up the stats. The infinity gauntlet of 100% win rates, maybe so. One more fight here for Shikigami, and their ult disadvantage is ginormous. Yeah, there's no, it's, it's gonna be so tough to get any of these ultimates online. Even if you get the pulse or the Kitsune rush, Toronto could just very well get a pick before you do that. Someone, is playing Balloon's Tower Defense on high ground with Malga. He's just popping all the He's balloons in a different down game. Off he is very much playing a different game right now. All good though. Sugar Free's got Duke, Merritt with a pulse. Vega, well, get that beat. Still got it. Base and spawn. So that's one pick. Duplication coming in. What's scarier than one tracer in this meta? Two of them. But Rupal does end up going down. Actually, this is going in the way of Shikigami right now. Merritt forced to hit the recall, even with a pulse bomb in hand. We'll see if someone can uh, farm their ultimate. Quick sharp. Doesn't look like it. Still holding height. But still, uh, just a, a mammoth, a mountain to climb, Rose. 131 meters versus 42. But we've seen crazier things in Overwatch. We have. You can't step off of this bot at all, though. They okay, 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 uh, okay. We'll ignore that one. Cameras, uh, production, please cut to uh, please cut to a different screen. Thank you. Oh dear. There was no. There was a little bit of pressure from Toronto there, but uh, stepping off the stepping off the se stepping off the s stepping off the bot is a little bit of a Charlie Niner. Yeah. yeah. So it, so his face says it. Sorry. Yeah, I was just. <laughs> trying to figure out I have like a hundred tabs open so yeah that just <laughs> happened uh I mean honestly I'm not mad about what we just saw uh this is the dominance you want to see from a team like that and you know what I like that they weren't sweaty about it either they had some fun with it we saw some out there picks just to throw all the stats out of the windows you know uh, you know Reinhardt won a 100% win right now uh, so he can rest on that laurel uh, Overall, I'm just excited to see more from Toronto Defined. I'm excited to see which team can push them to the limit. Yeah, and there are a, a few teams in the NA region right now that can do that. I'm, th I'm thinking of teams especially like M80. Uh, Shikigami, of course, not stepping up to them. Uh, they're getting 3 0 It's rough. But collegiate players, I think, have uh, they're not had it hard, but I think this is a good chance for them to play against some of the best. Uh, a lot of them didn't end up making it to, to Overwatch League, but I think collegiate has been just such a good uh, proving grounds for a lot of very, very highly skilled and highly ranked players um, in NA. So it's exciting to see teams like Shikigami um, come up big. And even if they do go down 3 0, there are still some bright spots. I think you could still say a lot about <laughs> the, the tanks coming in. It's hard to step up against an MVP like that, but 
any kind of small highlight reel is going to be a good thing, especially when you're playing against some of the best. So it's um, even though it was 3-0, I think it was still a decent showing from Shikigami considering the circumstances. Oh, I think Rose is muted. Rip. <laughs> All good. Yeah, well, I heard her, so I feel like the winner. And that, uh, yeah, I mean, this EMP specifically, this this is what I'm talking about. The, the the tempo, the speed. Vega RuPaul were only just coming back into that fight. And it was like, okay, we have a really, really good opportunity just to delete the Lucio here. We know they have sound barrier. So we're just going to go in, just trust in the instinct. And uh, oh, that is just, uh, that's rough. That's a rough C9 <laughs> at the very end there. Yeah, what a what a way to end. I'm sure Shikigami not super happy about how it ended, but you know there were some bright spots here and there for them. I'm interested to see yeah. how far they can go in the competition. Once again, this is just a winning match, right? Uh, the winners match rather of the group stages. That means that the losing team here is not out just yet. They still have an opportunity to actually make it through to the main event and take those right. losses, take what you learned what uh, in in that loss uh, in order to you know move on and maybe do that exactly. in your next match. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's to come. This was just the first match of our NA region. We're now heading into a very quick break and we're back with more action after this.